Drow matchup. But hopefully, Puck and Storm can do a good job and shut this bat rider down. Yeah, and Viking seems to be bridging the gap with the odds as well. It seems like game one earning them a little bit of respect, and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. Is this again looking like another Viking GG favorite draft? Like I wouldn't Blizzard? say so. I, I wouldn't say that this is completely uh, an out draft from Viking GG. I definitely see some upsides to it. Again, you have the Spectre versus the Draw, which is pretty solid. The Bat Rider last pick was also a pretty good pick, but I like the response from Liquid as well with the Storm Spirit. I really see strengths Prepare on both of these drafts. I would value Liquid this time around a little bit more. However, a few mistakes again, and it can all go down the drain. Fair enough. We'll see what Viking GG are capable of and if they can pull out an upset in this first series of the day as we pass it on to our casters, Odie Pixel and Fogged. Thank you very much. Yes, game two ready to go. And um, with these drafts, Fog, would you sort of agree that this time around Liquid's got a, a better way of maybe matching the tempo that we, we saw in game one Viking bring with sort of a ferocious pace? Yeah, absolutely. I think they just actually have uh, easier to like use spells and just be able to make, make surround. Thirty seconds to battle. Liberty of you know just your toolkit to just do damage, right? Before it was Tiny Toss, Stun, yeah. Mirana, st Combo, Spirit Break, all this damage coming into play. This one, a lot of it is going to be relying on Firefly, relying on Bat Rider, who is into two heroes the that are kind of good versus Bat. In in the olden days, right? Venge and Puck used to be looked at pretty good heroes versus Bat. They can move around and respond to him. But I've also just seen Bats run away with games and take over super hard. So that's probably the biggest thing I'm looking at to take, uh, take care of everything for Viking is... How good of a game does Boom have? Because yeah. he was explosive last game. Uh, and, and do you like the answer to, to Boom? Oh. The the uh, D-Ward. Check for he the checked. vision. Yeah, he walked into the you know little side of the vision for the tower to be able to check if there's ward vision there. Let me get to deny one more hit. They're both playing around it. There we go. Hitting hey, hey, together hey, nicely. Hey. Nice bit of teamwork for Liquid. We'll secure them that ward. Uh, and then so in this mid lane, Quake up getting that last pick storm as a response to the bat. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Not a whole lot of disabled you have to worry about. It's just lasso, doom, and like spirit breaker's abilities, which you can play around. You can you can you know zip into spirit breaker. You can pull them beforehand. They have gusts. They have lots of different abilities this time to mess with Aramis. We're seeing them already starting to pull the wave. Panel mentioned Drow Venge, one of the strongest like duo straight up in lane versus melees. Right, spirit breaker and doom. These two heroes just don't do much of anything until later on versus that Venge and Drow. Yeah, yeah, nice lane setups for Liquid. So you imagine, you know, well, this top lane Drow pretty much going to have free farm. He just missed the range creep under tower, but oh. should be free farm. Okay. He just missed the second creep, actually, in fact, too. So he should have free farm, but he just missed two under tower. And I think he just missed the third under tower, too. Oh, no, he got it. Okay. Almost missed three CS, but we'll be able to fix that up. And Aramis will do the full deny behind. I mean, he played that perfectly. I think this is exactly the move the Spirit Breaker needed to do because a hero like Vengeful Spirit, you actually cannot pressure when Spirit Breaker does this. Other amazing zoning heroes like Bane, Undying, something like this, you can contest between that wave. But Venge, it's too scary. You're too slow and just not very strong at all. Yeah, so. well, what about this mid now? 12 for 5 against the, the 5 for 1. Yeah. Quake for just playing the first few waves per perfectly with the, the burst of the remnants and just pushing them out and securing pretty much every single CS. Oh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a... Uh, it's a funny lane. It, it works in favor of Storm yeah. because you're always pushing the lane into bat side, but bat can pose kill threat always if you make a mistake on that Storm. Sure. I, it feels hard, though, as the bat. I do, I do feel like Storm... It is hard. Uh, especially if... I don't, I don't know if he's playing with stick or if he will be, but even without that, you're always going to have the, the difficulty of actually getting aggressive on the Absolutely. Storm because a remnant and a pull and a, another remnant, suddenly you're taking much more damage than you've been able to dish out to the Storm. Yeah, and your your Firefly has such yeah. a long cooldown. You can never... like You're never going to be in a point where you shouldn't be a point usually where it's like a double creep wave and you're diving a storm the storm is usually going to have his wave pushing onto your side so you can see he didn't even scale fire, firefly in this matchup he understands he's not going to get on top of that storm in most situations so. yeah I, I, I guess yeah i'm just able to at least harass a bit more officially than you know 
capitalize on when he yeah. does get the high stacks with a, a good old flame break to, to at least do some damage to try and push Quoke for away. But yeah, even with that, Quoke having a, a very, very strong showing here. Let's, let's see if the rotation changes things, right? Now he's level four on bat, so he has Firefly, he has Flame Break. They have a Spirit Breaker on their team, so see if Aramis can look to help the mid lane. First, though, he's going to save Toby with it looks like top. So she may just die for his efforts, though. So if there's any way that Aramis could get out of his trying to hide in the trees, Mikhail and Asenia will be able to find him, though. Such a strong lane. Yeah, always going to be difficult. I mean, that, that's sort of how it's going to go, right? If, yeah. if the Doom's about to die, you know, Toby's not going to get out alive. You, you're going to have to have Aramis go in to, to give his life to, to keep Toby safe. Yep. I think Aramis did not want to do that, honestly. I, I'm, I'm like 90% sure Aramis wanted to sit around the mid area and charge for the four minute bounty rune, or four minute power rune, to be able to set up onto Koifa with Boom. But having to try to help top, now it's messed with his rotation a little bit. They will luck out and get the rune up top. Let's see if Tiger can keep up these body blocks, keep him in range of oh, Koifa. He's doing a good job, Tiger, and it's. Is it good enough? One more proc of the overload, not enough. Toss! Oh, that'll do it. That'll do it. Tiger, some lovely little body blocking there around mid, making sure damage can be done and the kill can be picked up. I like the Tiger match. You match the aggression, right? You see the Spirit Breaker rotating, you must do the same thing. Great little heads up there play by Liquid, ensuring that the Storm Spirit will continue to having in, continue to have a great time in mid lane. Quite for going to be up to level six pretty soon. Might just stick around for the bounty rune. And we'll see. I mean, this game, Koifa, can, can he go aggressive with his item build? Does he have to get a Yules for himself first? Can, can he sort of go for an Orchid build on Storm? Um, it's not any, like, glaring heroes that he needs an Orchid versus. Okay. Usually it's, like, your versus an Ember Spirit, your versus a Void Spirit, your versus a Void, something like that that actually requires it. I think he can... I don't know. I think I think he has his options. He might just go for some more of his greedy type of build. He might still go for the Orchid even, too, but it's just... It's not like it's super necessary, this game. Just could definitely work. I see Aramis, he's going to be able to come around. Get okay. Ward down, Tiger. Still hanging around and they did see him come over there with the ward themselves. He's trying to get some type of like back charges onto Koikva before he's six. He really wants to kill this storm at least once, but look at the way Liquid knows this oh, is yeah. happening. They're keeping Koikva very safe. Yeah. They've got the bodyguards up and down the river. Yep, and they know that they're like, oh, Toby's top alone. So that means that they're trying to make this play. Storm hits six, immediately they're going to make the move first. Yep, straight in onto Boom with the zip. The magic missile from the back here. Insania locks down the bat. Boom up to the high ground, but the last hit from Koikva will do it. He's got enough mana as well to tear himself away from Aramis and Solari. Preparation is at its finest right there. Bruins coming out in two seconds. Aramis will not be able to get it. Oh. He will be able to charge away here for a second. The zip, though, will bring him down, and Koifa also going to get the rune. And I am Koifa off to a hot start this game. 2 0 1. Some lovely kills here as Liquid just enabling Koifa's game in the mid lane. Beautiful. That's, that's what you want to see. They, they're like, oh. Foxy's a puck bottom. He's not dying versus Spectre Io. It's just not oh. going to happen. So they know they can do this liberty. Same thing for top. It's a Drow versus a Doom. They know Mickey's got the freedom. They know that Spirit Breaker is going to play around mid. Yeah, real heads up plays there by Liquid. And maybe getting aggressive. Thinking about getting aggressive on Shad there, but too much damage reduction. Yeah, I'll too do so. Insane. With Tiger around. Can't really go and turn back on a boxy when Liquid poke onto Shad. Nah. I think they're very happy with this, though. Seven minutes, your Drow hasn't gotten pressured. Your Storm hasn't gotten fully well. You've reacted really well to your Storm getting pressured. Yeah, looking like a real hot start here for Team Liquid. I mean, is this another similar draft like Game 1 where Viking could just you know, end up falling behind a little bit in the lanes, then come that sort of 10 minute plus, they, they start making moves as five and uh, and getting this snowball going like they did in the first game? Uh, they definitely do have the potential for it, right? With Spectre Haunt, with Spirit Breaker Charge, they still do have mobility, but I think Liquid has much better responses this time. Like the Venge, the Tiny, they can move around a lot easier. Same thing with the Puck. They could always respond to those counter ganks and counter gank a lot easier in comparison this game. Full six, Boxy. Saving the coil. Well, I'm gonna try it now. 
Oil drop down. Responses are there. Quite for coming in with a big zip on to Shad. A lot of heals. It's not enough damage here from Liquid to kill Shad off as he will be more than fine there. Boxy. The back up. The lasso's there. The trip Boxy up after he's used the orb. As Boxy, he's only got that little jump left and it's not enough of a jump to take him away from Shad. Quite turns back on towards the Spectre. Continue to try and burst him low, but it's so hard. But Celery healing up Shad. Can they quite finish him? Shad's so alone. to go away from this storm, but Quite with his arcane brood just has an infinite oh, reserve of mana to keep the pressure on, get the kill. At the same time, top lane Viking will be able to dive in and find Mickey. So at least able to find a carry in return, but that is Vikings mid and carry going down on that bottom lane with Koi Frey able to clean up with the Arcane Rune. Yeah, Arcane Rune coming in clutch. He definitely would not have had the mana for those extra not. little static remnants. Plus overload hits onto them there. Yeah, the damage is overwhelming. No Viking does have a great amount of sustain down there. It's enough. And he is going to go for Orchid anyway. Just the item is just too good now. 3400, 3500 gold. Way too strong. But good response from Viking at least, right? They capitalize on the moment. Toby as well as Aramis, they get very aggressive. They get that drow. And Toby's still, I mean, he's all the way up there in that net worth. The beauty about Doom. One or two kills plus your Devour and you're back in the game. Radiant's bottom tower Even after a rough attack. lane. Dyer's top tower. And he's going to have a strong attack. farm on him, Tiger. Boxy on the hunt, heading over toward this top lane. Boxy with the coil ready to go once again. Bottom. Toby. He's under the tower as well, too. This is a, this is a scary position to be in for this Doom. Let's see if he can run his way out of this, Tiger. Trying for the setup. Gets the avalanche. Not going to be able to find the Ooh. toss, though. On the creep instead as Toby's able to break into the trees and get himself away and he is out of there. Boxy unable to find him. Nobody else could really TP it seemed like. I thought maybe they were asking for Mickey's TP, but I believe he had already TP down to bottom. So no drought TP, no storm mana. Not enough with the two of them there. That's 10 minute runes. Hang up now, Aramis. Going a little too close to the three of them, quite for finding the right places to be each and every time in this early game. 5-0 and 1 now on the Storm. It's gonna, I feel like for Aramis this game, it's gonna be a lot harder for him to look like this tanky Spirit Breaker beast. Versus Venge and Drow, you really start to look like Paper a lot of the, those times as these four position melee heroes. Already up to a 2k lead, Liquid. Making all the right moves and really shutting down Boom. Look at the 0-2-1 on the bat. As we said, last pick bat, but they responded super well versus it on Liquid, both from their mid, mid pick as well as their rotations early game so far. Making all the right moves. Radiant structure. Now, free farm for Toby does continue. Yep. We're, we're, we're gonna see what the drums done, so. He's now big. some really good chase potential. Dyer's These fights, Koifer's got to be a little careful if he overextends with the mana. Toby has the chance of running him down, getting the doom on him. Yeah, they still have good farm, like Toby as well as their Spectre. Still chilling, still having a pretty solid game. And naturally, you know, that Spectre is always going to be good versus Drow in the mid game. Looks like he also, I believe, has his drum finished. So I think it's fighting time, right? I think Viking is yeah. the kind of style they like to play. I think it's time to just look for the battles. But I think Dyer's it's going to be battles about numbers. Just like they did last game, it's all about that mobility. Split the map up, catch Liquid when they're split up with that relocate, with that charge. Yeah, Koifa is almost that Orchid, though. Yeah, his farm is just... It, it, I mean, you should look at the comparison between him and Boom. You know, Boom really falling behind at this bat. This is going to be a, a pretty slow boost to travel timing from him this game. Yeah. Radiance middle tower. Also getting the Arcane attack. Ring, of course, on Storm. Probably the best item you could get. Let's see, the charge, the hunt, this is where they're going for the numbers play. Yeah, McKay and Insania were pushing oh, him they're very pretty hard. aggressive here. What the? Right up by the tier two, the two of them. As Insania, he's not out either. I mean, what what were they doing there? That's a great question there, Owen. I'm not too sure. I mean, I mean, they tried to go for, okay. So they put a deep ward down, but okay. not sure why they stuck around. You Radiance you know the way Viking plays especially too, right? Yeah, they're, they're going to be on you as those five. Fights. Yeah, that's um definitely a bit of an overzealous move there from Liquid. Looking to pressure the tower here. It gives Boxy a little bit of space, but yeah, that gets punished real quick. Yeah, they've got to be careful push, pushing out just as the two of them. They're just easily going to be outnumbered. Yeah. Every time they're done, like, it's, okay, and it's, it's sure, maybe if one of them was there, it's sure. like one of those, you know, getting solo farm, solo XP, the chance you're going to die, but 
when there's two down there and, and they're still helpless, it's like, well, what was the plan? And look at, I mean, just, just look at the global. Look at their lineup. That's without the relocate. That's without the lasso. That's literally just them using haunt and running at you with charge. So Viking, they still have everything at their disposal in order to expend if they would like to. Liquid still, of course, they're in a fine spot. That was just a little bit of painful, you know, unnecessary maybe deaths there from them. Toby just 500 off the blink. He is a, he's a big boy, and he's got the Ice Armor creep, probably the best creep you can find versus the Drow Ranger, as Drow's ultimate only hits through main armor, as we taught on with Alice last week. Visibility. Yeah, that Toby, plus armor. A real force in, in yeah. terms of being able to get on top of the Drow as well in these fights, Mickey. It's going to have to heavily rely on Insania to be around with the swap saves. Korkva is very strong, but he's fragile. 1,000 HP, no treads, just straight for that Orchid. If he finds anybody by himself, though, it's very likely they'll get the kill. Oh, Ooh, quite an cool. IO passing by. They have a sentry down. They see him. They get the charge on him, too, so they're aware of this. And uh -oh. now rotations are coming. Koifa might just have Radiant's to bail. He's going to have to. Oh. Zip, zip away. All the way back to the tower. Full mana pool used. But top now. Yeah, top is just, Toby. He's just going for it. They've got the Doom down on the Tiny Insania with the swap to the side. Gets him in range at the stun. They'll turn things on to Toby. Celery comes in to oh. off up the save. But the core's down off the two of them into the multi shot from Mickey. As Liquid will be able to clean those two up. Back over in the river though, Koifa. He hung around. And they've got him. The lasso onto the storm. Koifa. It looked like he was playing his chances there for the 14 minute power rune. It didn't spawn bottom. And already we saw he used all of his mana to get back towards the tower. So he was playing out, walking alone in the river with no way to get out. Look at those tips. You see how much gold he just got for that kill there? 500 for Boom, because it was a mega kill streak from Koifa. Juicy. But. We did see what we were talking about earlier, is that response that Liquid does have this time. Your versus Doom, your versus Bat, they have Venge Swap. They have a lot of different ways to bail each other out. And Boxy, cool item choices this game from him. Going for a, you know, going for that Vessel. Not something you see Radiant's the most often, but versus top. Io. Yeah, someone's got to get Doom, it. Someone's got to get it. Looked real good up top there as he got that Coil plus Vessel charge immediately. Now they've got the Blink on Taiga. He just finished this one up. So they're trying to press forward here, look for those bounties. And they'll find a freebie. Aramis just caught, stepping up into the blindness of the high ground. And now they get some space to hit the tower with this drow. Tower gets brought down very quickly. Viking, they don't have Doom available. They have Haunt, but... Ah, yeah, a bit too scared to go in here versus all five of Team Liquid. This is not the fights they want. They want the split fights. They don't want the head on 5v5. They want to be going for like the numbers, take people picked off. Radiance middle tower has fought liquid getting active Here we have it big zip in Toby dodging with the blink now maybe with the counter play Viking GG come and charge The boss Aramis is in onto Koifa Jack comes in with a horn into the lasso they've caught Koifa They made it look easy They're gonna turn over for more now Toby trying to charge in towards McKen and Senior They're on the retreat liquid The drums they're popped This is the five man plays of Viking that we saw come out on top each and every time in game one They're just running them down but there is a nice three man dream coil from Boxy There'll be a bad back from Teller he's trying to come over Mickey's going for the TPI is there a bash? There isn't Mickey's out and away. Make it out of this one still. The chase continues. Oh, he TP'd to the base. Oh, he tp to the tower. He's... He's, he's gonna go down dead. now for that. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I thought he was going home. He did They might get a kill, though. Let's see. They got... Okay. Yeah. Insania. Also falling. Can they find Boom as well? Zip over onto the bat. They've got the catch with the silence. All right, all right. All right, works out. It was all the... It was a bait. It was the plan from Mickey. Yeah, yeah. He said, let me stay on the map. We're going to bait them past this tower, and you guys are going to clean up. And that was the case. They get Boom, and they get Shad because of that bait. Yeah, Mickey's like, I right, yeah. TP the tower. Koifa's responding. Koifa's got the cleanup. Thank you, Koifa. And Koifa will be able to. But we see the relentless aggression. This is the Viking style. Yeah, Pop their drums, run up the hill. Even though you get coiled, run through the coil, get on top of the drow. Yeah. And um, we do see those. You mentioned Liquid being able to fight back much better than they were able to yes. deal with it in game one. Oh, the Doom. Ooh. The Blink. Toby, the surprise. That's, that should be able to find them a kill here. Oh, definitely. Koifa's gone. See ya. 
And they want another? I mean, the Dream Pod is down on the three of them, but Aramis is still able to get over towards Tiger. They lose Celery. See on the side, and Senior trying to go for the swap arm, but the coil has already come to an end. Jump off nice Tiger. Time. Get the Avalanche onto the three of them, sets up for Mickey to finish off the kill. Aramis charges in to put Mickey's damage to a stop, but Mickey still able to get that final hit over with the help of Boxy. They pick up Toby as double kill there for the puck. Liquid again able to fight back into this aggression that Viking GG are trying to bring, and they're going to turn straight towards the pit and with the drow and the venge they'll have no trouble cleaning this up before vikings back on the map yeah i wonder why insania didn't actually use the swap there on spirit breaker i thought he would just get another kill when he was keeping out he saved the charge maybe he wanted to save it defensively either way they won the fight because of the positioning great spot there for mickey to be standing boxy as well as tiger did a great job zoning those heroes away yeah and it's you know the last few fights have sort of kicked off on the death of koifa but it's worked out fine for liquid you know koifa keeps getting jumped it doesn't matter the rest of liquid the four of them can fight back against Viking. Oh, Koifa, though. You were mentioning him. Uh, and oh, look, look, the vacuum lasso. <laughs> All right, drags him back. Koifa, last bit of mana. It's gone. I'm staging a combat. That's the Aegis. Do they and have it, another way to stop? There's set up? nobody Sorry? coming to help him, but as you say, he's going to have the full mana. Charge through the creep. He tried to get him, but yeah, it's not enough. Yeah, that's all they have. Just that bash from the charge. It's a clever little charge there, play, but. All right, just like that, they punch back and get rid of that Aegis real quick. A little bit of a, I love seeing that in a vacuum lasso, right? Just pulls him back out of his zip no matter what. Yeah, I guess that's that's one of the reasons for it, right? Because nowadays you're not invulnerable during the zip. So he casted it before he started to zip. He zips past him and then it pulls him out of the, the ball lightning, right? Something like, I mean, so it's that's why it looks a little to... awkward because he's getting pulled yeah. out of the ult. I mean, sometimes it, yeah. we used to, we've seen that one happen so much. Like Murata leaps away and then you get lassoed after the leap. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just an interaction. It's a feature, right? It's a feature. Insania, he's going to start getting pretty farmed. You see he's gotten that Philosopher's Stone, Medallion finished up, perfect item built for him. I, good item build for his team, right? Of course, the medallion benefits a lot. Not the best Radiant item versus, I guess, Vikings. But it's still your revenge. What else do you buy? It's just Radiant's such a good item. Tower is under attack. There's just a lot of magic damage on the side of Viking early on. That doesn't really provide so much against it. But such a good item. Aramis, he'll stay bottom, try to protect his specter. Pass off that dragon scale. He also has a medallion himself to counteract that heavy physical Radiant's damage that Liquid has. has been killed. And oh! Who got the courier? Taiga did? I think that was the Manta, right? I, was, I think that was his ultimate orb, yeah. I think that it, was it was the... sad at the shop. Did he buy up? I think he might have charged. They're making the plays. They've got the global. All right. And they go with the horn straight up towards that top outpost. They'll take out Koifa. They'll also find Tiger. Tiger tries for a TP out, but he ain't, ain't getting out in time. Big jump by Toby. I mean, it's, it, it feels kind of weird because we, we've now seen Koifa die like five times in a row yeah but it doesn't seem to be mattering too much for liquid i mean is that going to change uh, can they really just keep playing like this with koifa sort of just dying to viking whilst the rest of the team farms or is this going to start to hit liquid in the face soon i think it's going to start hitting yeah. in the face soon it's a it's a drow versus specter lineup like naturally the drow is going to start it's sure. going to start becoming a lot more difficult for mickey as the game progresses they need a secondary carry yeah so like why for making space by dying over and over again it, it's just not going to be good enough no definitely not especially not in the position that he's dying right like he yeah. just died on his side of the map they had to expend quite a lot for him, though. They did have to use pretty much everything, so it's how Liquid capitalized off of it next. But they lost their Aegis. He's died a couple times. See what Mickey does with this space, though. As Quakefa's game has halted quite significantly. He's pretty much tied in net worth with the Batrider. A couple chain deaths. Now, like we said, though, ultimates were used. Let's see how Liquid responds. They have to try to make some type of aggressive move. 4K lead, and walking into the high ground. Oh, they're gonna catch on to Aramis. And we'll uh, be, the, be the man to tank the gank. Everyone else is out. Uh, this move's gonna get a little harder to do now that Celery does have his mech complete, so... Mm -hmm. Extra bit of burst save potential. No mech on the side of Liquid either, so they're always gonna have to factor that into their team fights. And wow, that's actually almost a BKB on Doom. That makes that makes this game a lot easier. There's still, like we said, a lot of straight physical damage that comes out from Liquid, but if he ice armors himself and then BKBs, he has good ways to just get into Mickey onto the back line. Yeah, he's, he's pretty much always going to be able to get his Doom off yeah. you know, in these fights. Unlikely that they sort of tear him apart before he steps up oh, yeah, no. and drops Definitely. it down. 
see that, you know, they have that warrant top two, so they're scouting where the drow's positioned. Yeah, and you re really sort of start to see the the hit that Quofa's game's taken with those deaths on his, his item timing, because it was a very quick Orchid, but it's been quite a few minutes since he had that finished up, and he's only just picked up the Kyra on top of it. Wow, so. okay, yeah, he's very slowed down. Yeah. Does he st uh, does he still have um, the Arcane Ring on Quofa? I actually was trying to... Ah, he's, I mean, he must be holding on to it, right? No, okay, he got the Essence. Oh, Sorry, okay, that's right. That is, he did that have Essence, yeah. yeah. I was wondering if they were going to give him the the Vambrace, because it's actually a lot of damage that you get amped up from it the is. spell damage alone, just from the double null thing that you get from it. I but think they gave it to Boxy for now, so yeah. it's like, this is survivability because he's struggling. So. Exactly, he's still 1200 HP, so that, yes. that essence ring boost to the HP is going to make all the difference. Top, uh, he the Haunt comes out, Toby's in with a BKB, Koifer has a DD rune, can he fight with it? So he seems a little scared, he's trying to get away. Get swap, disengage. Hive okay. inside of the pit, they're going to turn back over towards the high ground, look towards Boxy, Boxy goes over with the orb. We'll be able to pick the kill up on the okay. Ion. All right. Getting burst low. Quite for coming in to try and go for the finisher, and he's able to find it. Takes out Aramis. This time, Liquid. They'll find themselves the two supports. And Sanya with the swap back onto Boom will get him back in reach of Mickey as they find themselves three. Over towards Toby, they look. Toby will have the movement speed to make it away. Liquid, they are able to turn and hit back, aren't they, in that fight? I mean, Toby commits in as the Doom. Wasn't able to find an opportunity to use his ultimate, though. Didn't find a target. I think the Shadow Blade caught them off guard. Radiant I saw the Haunt come out, the Doom blink on top of Mickey, and then he just Shadow Blade and got swapped away, and they they reset the fight so beautifully on the side of Liquid. Yeah, I don't think Viking was prepared for that one, because they used, I mean, they used their Haunt, they used their Lasso, they tried to jump in the back, but just couldn't get the right targets. Now Dust definitely will be bought in preparation to deal with that. But a big win for Liquid. They can back up, get themselves some much needed much needed breathing room. In particular for Koikva. Shad's still farming, like he's still a beast. And it's always gonna be a concern. You have a Drow Ranger lineup versus a Spectre. Radiant and this Spectre Austin. is not dying. Although you are keeping a good lead, it's always something to keep in the back of your minds. Taiga. Taiga. He wants the ward. I he's gonna get it. So yeah, still this 7k lead mm -hmm. for Liquid. The, the draft has definitely top. worked and out in, in 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 the sense that they are able to play the play the Dota that Vikings been bringing to them. Yeah, but this Spectre Dark does still ten. remain pretty spooky, and uh, he's only going to get spooky up as the minutes pass. So we'll always have the damage for him, though, right? Like, especially because of the itemization. If he ever does choose to go for, let's say, Silver Edge, even though it's kind of a weird item to get on Drow, I think he probably, still, he will, probably right? still will eventually. Yeah, it's fill out the slot. It's still, yeah, it's, it's still it's some fine. stats. It's still know? fine. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the, yeah, the, the break is is always going to be essential, especially yeah. in the the late game. And they just have so much damage anyway. Insania looks like he'll be the one they walk into. They're trying to save the lasso here, but Boom now is in trouble. I did put the BKB. Does go for the lasso now onto Insania. The Hulk comes out as well. Toby charges in Mickey. He's going to get Doom. They've got themselves the target. They've found the Drow. Out isolated Mickey as there's no save for him with Insania already out of the fight. Charge across as well from Aramis. He's trying to go for a further target. Looking for Koifa. Koifa still with some mana ready to play with as he gets himself up to the high ground. Koifa will live. Viking finally able to get back and on the level of finding these, these moves where they get McKay out of it. And with McKay gone, that is a huge amount of the damage that Liquid have been able to get off in these team fights. So it makes it suddenly very hard for, for Liquid to fight back once the Drow's out. Yeah, Liquid at camp, as soon as the like Liquid gets seen with the, like, the smoke, right? That feels like when the fight's almost impossible because Hot gets popped and they have so many ways to collapse on top of Mickey. It feels like Liquid has to be the ones that are doing the initiation in order to protect that Drow Ranger. There's so many different forms of vision and aspect. Yeah, Doom Inspector is missing. You see the way that Boxy's saying it. It's just like, these two heroes, they're gonna beeline on top of Mickey every yeah. fight, especially because, like we mentioned, Koikva's game got slowed down. They can kind of start to think about Koikva later on. He doesn't really deal out that much damage. So just focus Drow, then look for him. 
And Saiga. Saiga finds himself a catch on to Aramis. Toss back into the magic missile. Celery's going to be in with the save, oh. though. The coil comes out a little too late. Celery gets them out. Celery, of course. They're coming to fight this. I mean, they're, they're going to try to. They want to keep Celery safe on the return. Boom, leads in with the lasso. Nice will be broken immediately by Insania. Swap, Shad. Caught by the magic missile. Celery turns the cross over the Spectre. But he gets pulled back quite, but takes out the IO. His BKB is worn off. The Swap trying to separate Toby from Mikke. Mikke nice tries charge. to the body shot by Aramis. Charges across Mikke. Hits onto Koifa. Into the ultimate. Tiger surrounded by the illusions of Shad. Tiger trying to run. Koifa and Boxy will finish the kill onto Aramis. It's a three for three. Shad's Shad cleaning up, though. onto Koifa. Koifa, very little mana left to play with. Uses his last reserves to get himself into the river. The dagger? Not quite going to be able to chase him forward there. They clean up Toby. They can't deal with Shad, though. I mean, that, that is the problem. I mean, even in this fight where... The results end up being even. I mean, if anything, Liquid out on top a little bit by the goal due to Celery making that investment at the buyback at the end of it all. But yeah, that, that definitely seems to worry. Shad in that fight, I don't think he ever got lower than half HP. No. This Spectre starting to, to really look like Diamond an issue for Liquid, tower, despite Liquid attack. as a team still being ahead Radiant's overall. It's it just, attack. there's so many different ways for them to get on top of Mickey. This charge at the end there is beautiful, comes through pretty much everybody, hits three or four targets. The Doom, the Spectre Haunt, the Bat Rider, everything just gets popped, and Mick is just in panic mode, right? You just don't, you have to just kind of hold your ground, hope to the best you can get those right clicks, because they just have so many tools. Now an Eye of Scotty finished up too, so that slow is going to come into play. Shad is very scary, even though yep. Liquid has an 8k gold lead, they, this Spectre is something out of control right now. And it... it it's sort of what you said as well that, that seems to be the the biggest thing that stands to, to be the difference. The fact that, sure, both Boom and Quifa, their individual games have slowed down a lot. You know, Quifa is slightly ahead, but still as this Storm is, his item progression has really slowed down. I think he's nearly got the Bloodstone done uh, over the Orchid. Uh, but that has just put so much pressure on Mikkei as the Drow. Uh, whereas on Viking's oh. side, sure, it's a lot of pressure on the Spectre. It doesn't matter. It's a Spectre. It's a Spectre. He's, he's, exactly. He's, sort of itemize towards it? I mean, you're looking at anything else on the, on the team that they can get to, to deal with this Spectre better or to, to keep the Drow safe? As uh, we get ourselves back into the action and actually straight back into a fight. What the heck? That looks to have gone very well for Liquid. Wait, three are dead. All right. I mean, did Liquid smoke? I mean, that's going to be Roche as well for them. Oh, and a regen rune. All right, well, I think we just missed maybe the potential, like, huge fight for Liquid. They, they didn't get the Spectre, though, so this was a yeah. fight what, without the horn. But, I guess but a very good fight nonetheless for Liquid, yeah. as this will give them the tools to, to maybe start poking towards the high ground and trying to do more whilst the horn is down. I'm assuming that they must have just smoked on the situation, like right when they had the chance. Like smoke and look for the fight because there was no Doom, there was no Haunt available, so they just found the heads up plays, got three of them there. And I mean, that's a huge place to take it to, right in front of the Roche pit. And they get a regen rune. And oh! Can't quite get Boom, but yeah. Pretty huge, and I believe it was right after Bloodstone was picked up too. So. Yes, I, I imagine he's got the Bloodstone charges up from that. Yep. All right, I mean, massive. And now Boxy has a fault. This is the item that I was actually going to say that they need in order to protect the Drow is that Agonim's on Puck because those BKBs that are out, he can actually prevent. And they can do fun plays always. You always have the potential for Puck and Venge, especially with Ags, that super long duration break when you swap out a coil. They can catch people off guard. Yeah, they go well, multiple ways, right? You, yeah, toss you, the back. Toss, the, yeah. The, even the push from the Gus, right? I mean, even the pull from the Vortex. You I mean, I yourself, technically, yeah. Technically, <laughs> a shot, it's a little harder with those because the, the amount of, of movement done yeah. to the, the enemy isn't that great. But there is the chance. There's that a lot of the chance. A lot of push and pulls from Liquid's lineup. Yeah, Boxy's having a killer game. He had the Lincolns. He has the full Ags. I'll He's take that. Got the full Vessel. Yeah doing a very good job for his team right now with the Blink 2 on top, level 22. Yeah, that, that last fight really put Koi from Boxy back on, on the map in terms of farm. They, they're right back up there. 7, 1, and 13 on Boxy. He's really displaying right now this offlane puck that we don't get to see too often.
There we go, smoke on smoke. Viking. Still no Doom available for a second. Can Boom find the jump? He's gonna spot out Insania. He's gonna try and look to start things on it, but Tiger's in with the counter play. They'll still come in with the lasso. Look to and drag point. down the vengeful spirit. Here goes the Hawk. Can Chap find the target? He's looking over towards the back lines, trying to go towards this tiny, but quite from Boxy, they're already in. They're taking out Aramis. Mickey with the Molly Shots turns. Focus is Shad. Shad being chased down by Koi for Koi for oh, now goes God. over towards the easier kill. Oh, Boom will get it. The Doom is down onto Mickey as they have managed to eliminate the drought. There'll be a buyback from Boom as Viking, they're trying to put more is in this to win this fight, but the Spectre, Shad's in trouble. Koifa, lower mana gets one more remnant out. Koifa will fall for it. That's the Aegis gone. Boom, he bought back for this when he's trying to find Tiger, but it looks like it's going to be a dieback from Boom. He cannot turn this one around on his own as the bat out for a second time. Liquid's lead continuing to grow. Despite a few casualties themselves, still a, a very solid fight for Liquid as they hold their own. Yeah, they, they get three-man coiled. They get on top of the drow, but at that point, they'd already lost so many of their tools. Mikke, great positioning, sitting in the back lines, just firing his arrows onto three heroes. Yeah, continuing to take really good fights on Liquid. Even if they're... You know, their main carry kind of dies. That one, they have the Aegis, and Boxy's just reaping all the rewards. Boxy's yeah. like, thank you. I'm up to almost level 25 now on Puck. Having a dream performance, really. Him and Tiger surviving throughout the, all of it, the entirety of that fight as you see them all the way jumped up in those levels, 24 and 21. Yeah, some in insane levels actually coming out from Liquid Zeros. Yeah, they couldn't, they could not get on top of that drow fast enough though, right? That three-man coil controlled the majority of Viking. So they couldn't get on top of Mickey. What? The... <laughs> Well, you know this game, Fog. Of course. What, I have no idea what was happening. What, what, that was Clockwork what was and Techies. What was going on? That was mid lane. That was the mid lane. That was the mid lane. That was Techies and Clockwork. <laughs> you see Rattle Trap. That's my boy Rattle Trap right there. <laughs> oh god, Dota 1 looks so terrible. I forgot how you can't even see what anything is anymore. I like that. Very nice. See, I would have commented, but I mean, I never played the game, so you can like, still what tell am I what's going at? on. I could not tell. There was like some pixels in the mid lane and the some map, units. What, the map what feels a lot bigger. That's the one thing that you have to get really used to in Dota 1. Immediately when you look at it, the screen just looks massive. What, what, is that because the map was actually bigger or the models just I, smaller? I think it was a bit of both, oh. a bit of everything there. It just it always felt like the map was bigger for me when I played. I haven't played Dota 1 in four years, though. So <laughs> I tried to play an Earth Spirit four years ago, and I couldn't even find my stones. I was so lost. It was so tough I to play. The buttons would all be t oh, very yeah. different. Oh, Tiger. He's gonna catch himself. Doom outside of the base. Toby, as well as Celery. And now, looks like they actually got an Axe coil on the Spectre as well. Shad, the and flop to the side. They're oh, lying back to try and save him, but Shad, I don't think they can. He's gone. Liquid looking to clean this one up. No chance for the Spectre to carry this one away. They and quite far, he's finishing the show with a bam. As triple kill for him. The four of them dead. <laughs> The mass tips coming out on Toby there from Liquid. He bought back and just he bought back and died just immediately. They probably know they can just maybe just end the game here. They have quite a long time without Spectre. 60 seconds. They have Drow Venge. Yeah, that's, that's a huge fours. window to finish this one. Yeah, Liquid. I think they can go to your fours after this tower with their lineup. Yeah, they, they really wisened up their plan draft after game one. Get in there. They, they came in with this fighting lineup. Get into those tier fours. Insania knows he's pinging. It's time to end this end one. End this game. Solid plays there, even though versing a very farm Spectre throughout the majority of it, Mickey has stayed on top, Boxy as well. Perfect performance by this Puck, always being in the right place, right time. Yeah, they should be able to end this one right now. Tier Force down onto the Ancient, they've got the two of them alive, but Celery gets popped straight away by the combo. The Ancient will fall, GG is caught, and Liquid will strike back here in game two, bringing it to one, to one.